and good morning. Happy October. Uh, my name is Alicia. I am the Fanciful Flamingo and you have stumbled across perhaps for the first time my floss tube channel and if you're coming back as a friend, thank you so much for your fellowship this morning. I appreciate it. Um, if you are new here, I start all of my floss tubes with a moment of prayer and praise. And if prayer is not for you, I always say that nobody, um, I feel, can turn down a kind thought, a gentle word, um, a good wish. So, let's get started with that today. And, of course, uh, a week ago, the world changed forever, literally, because the geography of the United States changed forever. There are complete towns that are gone, destroyed, biblically. I mean, this is what we've read about. Um, so, I know we've all been praying for everyone affected by the catastrophic storm Helene from Florida all the way to the mountains of North Carolina. And I don't know about y'all, but I never, ever imagined that you could live high up on a mountain and suffer the devastation of a hurricane. I live in South Florida. I would expect it here. Um, but obviously, let's continue to pray for all of the towns affected. Let us pray for the families who are still searching for their loved ones. And let us pray for everyone who has suffered loss uh, from the storm. I know someone personally who lost their home. I have a friend of mine whose sister lost her home. I have another friend of mine whose sister lost her home and can't right now even get off Black Mountain. So um, please let us pray for them. I also have some, some prayers that people have reached out and requested. My dear friend April Jackson, Titus, is still recovering from surgery, so let's Keep the family in your prayers. Um, Jenny Massini, my dear sweet friend, double loss lately. Her mother passed away. Uh, they were able to go back and have a memorial service in her hometown um, at the end of September. And before Hurricane Helene, I had her on my prayer list to just pray for comfort. Losing a, a, a parent is never easy. And then right after they came back from the memorial service, they were packing up. Jenny was going to dying to stitch. Hurricane Helene came. And as many of you know, uh, Jenny and Tony lost their home in Hurricane Helene. Uh, let us continue to pray for Annie, the proper stitcher sister, who is dealing with lung cancer. Has not been able to have chemotherapy lately because her platelet count is low. So let us pray for those platelet counts to rise so that she continues with her treatment. Uh, and then my dear friends, Missy and Kathy. Kathy lost her father. Missy and Kathy are sister-in-law, so Missy's husband lost his father as well. She lost her father-in-law. Let's keep them and their families in our prayers. And for praise, praise to everyone who has risen up to volunteer in any way that they can to help those affected by the storm. The linemen who leave their families for weeks and months out of time. FEMA, government officials, um, police and fire departments who have left their towns to go help in the rescue efforts. And all of the men and women uh, across the United States who have dropped everything to go and help uh, their fellow brothers and sisters get through this time. Through hardships and catastrophes like this, it makes me proud to see how we rise up to help each other. Because that's really all that we can ask for, is just to love and help one another. So in all of this devastation, there are beautiful, beautiful stories of people coming together to help each other. And praise God for that. So thank you for joining me in this moment that was more somber than most. Um, but I'll be right back to talk about my stitching. Y'all don't go away. So I've changed my backdrop out a little bit to uh, 
ring in fall, which is kind of funny down here because it's still in the 90s in South Florida. But this is Witch in Her Garden by Brenda Gervais. And this was Chrissy, finally a farm girl's birthday sale two years ago. Um, and I think this was the first time I had stitched a Brenda Gervais. I either did it on a 16 or an 18 count. Um, and it was my first Brenda Gervais. And I was nervous, but I loved it. And this basket that it's on is just a Hobby Lobby basket and some scrapbook flowers from that the scrapbook section of Hobby Lobby. Um, and just, I almost bet that that fabric is from one of Primrose Cottage's bundles because you can't resist those. And just, and probably some rickrack. You know what, both of those are from one of their beehive bundles. It sure is. And then right here in the corner, this is a um, Judy Whitman pumpkin. And Karen at the Cross Stitch Cupboard and my friend Carolyn, Carolyn Stitches, actually um, picked this fabric and this floss, which I don't remember either of them. I wanna say this might be a fiber on a whim. Um, a couple years ago. And this is done again, maybe on an 18 count, but I love a white pumpkin, I do. So, um, I've switched out the quilt behind me, and no, it's not my quilt, because I'm just about to start my first jelly roll quilt, which I'll talk about today. My friend Susie, who is also a cross stitcher, a prolific quilter, my accountant, bless her heart, and one of my neighbors down here, uh, quilted this and when I wanted to switch out my background for fall I called her and I said Susie I know you've got to have a fall quilt that I can borrow from my background and she did and she's graciously let me put this for my backdrop this month so feeling a little bit of fall haven't decorated a ton um because it's hot and we had a hurricane and there's another tropical depression out in the gulf so I don't really know if we'll put outside stuff out this year but that's just a little bit about my backdrop um, I showed this last time, but I wanted to show it once again. This is one of the three that you would get in Annie the Proper Stitcher's Hallow's Eve, which is a new release for this year. Comes like this, and it's this one. I did mine on Tombstone by um, Atomic Ranch Rogue. And... I know it's a gentle art, so now I can't remember, I'm sorry, what floss I used. But now I'm trying to decide, do I wanna make it, if I did it into a pillow, it'd be a little bit bigger pillow, or do I want to frame it? I don't know, y'all tell me. Should I frame it, or should I do it into a pillow? That's why it's not finished yet, among other reasons. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, and then, for my birthday stitch, I chose Tulips for Rose by Trelly, the Spanish Stitcher. And it was a monochromatic in blue. And I think she had used Gloriana's, but I wanted to change it to the pinks and greens that are my craft room. Cause I knew I wanted to frame it and put it on the wall behind me. And so um, I just did a few changes and I will talk about them. There is a full there's one through 15, I think, of letters at the bottom. And I went back and forth and back and forth if I wanted to. I love an alphabet, I'm not crazy about numbers. Um, so I landed up doing, this is a Spanish sampler and I am from Spain, which is why I picked it. So I wanted to hold true to a lot of our traditions. So I did leave the second N, the Ñ, in the Spanish alphabet. And then in Spain, military, I don't know, probably lots of places, we put the date before the month. Um, so I was born the 22nd of September, 1970. Um, her Z has the line like we do, and I always grew up putting a line through my seven. So I did that as well. Um, it took me about a week to do it. It was just, for me, the perfect stitch. I did mine on a 36 count. And again, I don't have all of my information with me. The only other thing that I did, besides changing the colors, is for my initials, A, J, and V, 
I did it in, a, and I did the birds in just a little bit lighter pink as a way to personalize it, aside from my birth date. So, this again was Tulips for Rose by Trelly, the, the Spanish Stitcher. I will link her Etsy shop at the bottom, um, and you can buy and download this PDF and start stitching. I know several of my friends are stitching it with me. Kim, the Contented Needleworker. I kept calling her Inspired Needleworker last video. That's how long I'd been gone from floss tube. She um, is also doing it, and she personalized it as well and pulled from a few other patterns that she had and I mean, y'all know I'm obsessed with Kim, and she is just a genius and can do no wrong, and I follow her um, and everything she says and does, so y'all need to go check hers out. Um, Andrea Flanagan, my dear sweet sister from Another Mister, is doing it too, and for all of y'all who have joined in on my birthday stitch, thank you so much, and thank you for supporting my dear friend Trelly, the Spanish stitcher. Um, and then I broke, I was... I had on my schedule for September to do Olga's Autumn Stocking by Plum Street. Um, and I touched on this the last video. I feel, I'm gonna sit back a little bit, y'all, because we're just chit-chatting. I feel like I have done a lot of samplers this year, a lot of bigger pieces, and I just needed a break. And I wanted to do some smaller pieces, so I went into my whips and said, let me see what I can maybe pull out that doesn't need a ton to just be finished. Um, this is Baskets and Butterflies by Hello by Liz Matthews, and this came out at market, I want to say two years ago, and Annie the Proper Stitcher stitched it because, of course, you know, blue is her favorite color, and I kitted it up, wanted to stitch it then. I started it on a piece of 25 count that I had hand dyed myself, and I got this much of it done, and I think a butterfly, and stopped. And the problem was um, that I didn't pay attention to the orientation of my fabric, even though it was a 25 count. Um, and so I started on a horizontal instead of a vertical row. And yes, it matters. And what was happening is that my stitches were falling, were slipping behind. And I didn't like it. And I really didn't like the fabric that I had chosen either. So I put it aside. I have never ever stopped a stitch and restarted it. I'm kind of one of those once it starts, we are going on. And I regret that now because I have a couple of stitches, um, finished pieces that I just don't like. The fabric was wrong. Um, and I've done nothing with them after I why spend all that time when you know from the beginning that you're not going to like it. And so I used to think when I would watch like Jess um, Sweetwater Stitcher or Brendan Laura when they would get to a certain point, uh, Carol Saltbox has done it, and they're like, no, nope, I don't like it. And I'd be like, are you crazy? Look at all that time you've put into it. I understand now. Crazy am I for continuing on and finishing something that you didn't, that you knew from the very beginning you weren't going to like. All of that to say, I picked it back up and instead of continuing, I completely restarted it and I loved it. This is a 36 count Ada, but I finished it. Now I was trying to see, I've got, I don't know what it was called for, but when I bought this at the cross stitch cupboard and I will show you here, I still have this other piece. This is what I had gotten done on it. And you can say, well, it doesn't look that bad. Do you know how many times I had to go back in and like move the stitch to the front again because it had slipped? And um, I had done it one over one on 25, which was fine. I mean, I'll hold them side by side. There's not a huge difference. This one was probably smaller because it was 25 one over one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm glad I redid it. Now, when I bought this at the cross stitch cupboard, they had just come back from market and she had this Threadworks floss. It was not called for, but 
I wanted to use it. I wanted to try it. I had never tried Threadworks before. Before It is slightly variegated. Slightly. Um, and if you look closely on the stitch, you can pick up on some variegation, but not a lot. Um, thread work is a little bit thicker. Um, it felt thicker to me when I was stitching with it, so it's great coverage, especially if you're going to do one over one. Excellent coverage. I will give it that. Because then I started another one last night, one over one, with weeks, and it is really thin compared. So if you want a thicker coverage and you want to do a one over one, Sulky's good. This thread works is good. My only complaint, and I don't like to complain about anyone in the industry, and it is a hand over dyed floss, 100% cotton. You get about 20 yards, um, so you get a ton on a skein. All of that great. Because it is a little bit thicker, it knotted a lot. So if you are going to stitch with this, you are going to need some wax. And I had to run my thread, and I do not stitch with long threads. I do not mind re-threading a million times. Um, my lengths are usually about 12 inches. I do not 12 to 18, I do not stitch with long pieces of thread. Having said that, I still had to run every piece through my wax. Um, and then it still knotted some. And I know that I twist when I sew. So I take all of that into consideration. But just know, Threadworks is great. It's thicker. It's a beautiful coverage. Um, I enjoyed stitching with it, but I did have to run it through my wax. Um, but... Baskets and Butterflies is done. So I had three finishes of a little bit smaller pieces uh, in the month of September, and it was just what I needed. Uh, I liked having some smaller finishes. So those are my finishes. I don't have any whips because I have been mostly monogamously stitching uh, this year, and I do enjoy it. I was listening to both Jess and Contented Needleworker Kim say that they have realized that they can do about three, four days max on a stitch before they need something new. And um, they're not wrong. While I have been monogamous, monogamously stitching and sticking to it, and that has resulted in I only have one outstanding whip from this year. One, and that's Nottingham by Kathy Barrett, which I knew was going to be a bigger piece. So compared to other years where I put, I start, stitch a couple days, pick up something new, my whip count is non-existent this year. When I got to the end of Baskets and Butterflies, and y'all tell me if this ever happens to y'all, I was over here, I needed to do this little bit right here. Couldn't get it done. There's one day this week I didn't even stitch at all. I just couldn't pick it up. And I love to see the product. I love the process, but I love the finished piece. But when I got to right here, I could have put it down for a while. And so Wednesday and Thursday, I had to make myself finish it. Because it was so close, I was like, I am not going to put this down. I am going to finish it. I am going to finish what I start, which is what I always tell my children. But I thought to myself, now I understand. I really do have about three or four days where I am obsessed with a piece and that's all I want to stitch. And then after that, I have noticed that I start picking it up a little bit less. It takes me a little bit longer. Um, so all of that to say that I think taking a break and stitching some smaller pieces will be good for me. So, um, so those are done. And then I switched up what I was going to stitch for October. And I will be right back because I have to lean down and um, adjust a pile. Y'all know, y'all know my piles. I shared my craft room fiasco again this week on social media. I am who I am. 
So I was watching Kimberly Jolly last week and she was showing pieces that she has stitched throughout the years for fall and Halloween. I am not a huge Halloween stitcher. My children are older now um, and I kind of just feel like my fall pieces can last a little bit longer. So um, I don't have a ton of Halloween stitching, but uh, Kimberly showed Quaker Pumpkins by Hello by Liz Matthews. And I had this and I have been wanting to stitch it and it is a Quaker and I love Quakers and it checks all the boxes. I had just never gotten around to it. And so I decided to scrap my October plans from 24 uh, in 2024 and kit this up immediately. And I am stitching mine. Again, I left the tag off, good golly. I know this is a another uh, Atomic Ranch. I am obsessed with them lately. And I started this yesterday and that's what I've gotten done. And I wanna talk a little bit about the crazy stitching on it and why I've done what I've done. So for this one, just because of the way it looks, I am a center starter on a lot of things. Um, but if a sampler has a border, I will definitely start in the top left-hand corner. So I did. I uh, took my ruler and I measured down. I have my corner gauge from Fat Quarter Shop 2. So I measured down two and a half inches and I started in this corner. And then I did tent stitches or half stitches all the way down. And then I would put an X at the tenth one and then stitch down more and put an X, a full stitch on the next one all the way down. Um, and I did that as a gauge. And so now I can count on my chart and I can line it up with the grid, if that makes sense, especially on Quakers um, and samplers where not everything is tied together, but Quakers, you have to be so precise. If you are off a stitch, you will be unstitching. Um, it is something that you have to pay close attention to. So then I went to the bottom, when I got to the bottom, and I started on these little triangles at the bottom as a grid again. And then I went up and did the crow, which will be kind of the anchor of my bottom. And then I went up to this chain. And this chain will, this chain will actually go all the way across. This chain has a few, then it has a Quaker pumpkin, a few and a Quaker pumpkin. And I'm doing these all as kind of landmarks or gauges for my pumpkins. So I came down here, I did this crow, I did this chain, I went across, I did a little bit of this pumpkin and I did this chain. So I can, I know I can anchor these two pumpkins. And then I'll do the bottom of this one, do this chain, do the bottom of this one, do this chain until I have it all the way across and then I will have my anchors and then everything else can be based off of it. And I did it for two reasons. Uh, one, to help me anchor, because we all know that Alicia needs all the help she can get when she's counting, because counting is hard. Um, and also, I am going to stitch New England in a few weeks and I want to take this with me. Quakers are not the best thing to stitch when you're going to a retreat and you're talking. So, my plan is to go across and stitch these pumpkins now. So that when I am flying and when I am at the retreat, I can do all of the border, because all I'll have to do is go back and fill in the other half of the X. I know that each triangle is six, five up the center and then five back down. And then I'll have the fill in. I will fill in the chain across and I'll have the letters. And let's face it, if I even get that done at a retreat, um, that'll be saying a lot. Won't it, Tammy Totten? I put in maybe six st stitches at Stitch Florida. I, I 
the, uh, the only other one I've gone to this year is Library Stitchers, and I didn't put a whole heck of a lot when I was there. I do when I fly. I just sit on the plane, and I love to stitch when I fly um, and when I'm waiting at the airports. So the majority of the stitching that I do at Library Stitchers will probably be in my travel. But I set it up last night because um, I was sitting there last night thinking, really, Alicia, this is what you've decided to take to a retreat, a Quaker? that has precision counting. And then I thought, wait, I can do this. Cause I really, I know I'm not gonna have it up on the wall this year, but I would love to have it done. And then framed for next year, because I'd like to switch out my craft room walls um, for the seasons. So, and then the other one I switched out. I had this kitted up, but I did not have it. I don't think I had it for my 24, um, but pumpkin row by October House Fiber Arts. I did Pumpkin Fair at in the spring and I need to fully finish it. And so uh, Pumpkin Row is the next one that I have. And again, I had it kitted up. So I have everything ready to go. And I, this is the next one I would like to do in October. I'm not trying to be super ambitious in October because I know I have a retreat. I also have a box coming out at the end of the month. Um, which will take up a lot of my time, but that I love doing. And it is the last box for this year. But we will talk all about that in Shop Talk. So, um, I just realized something that I forgot to show y'all. Forgive me, y'all. It kind of goes with, and I had even pulled it off my wall. Hold on, I'm gonna bend down. So, speaking of Liz Matthews, on the wall in my den, I have Clara Hansen by Liz Matthews, and she um, stitched it in more of a teal blue. Again, I know that this is, this looks like a 16 count for sure, Ada, but I don't know the fabric. I did this last year, or the year before, because I did um, a stitch for my, my birth, for my daughter, for her birthday, and I was going to do one for my son, and I had picked this one. And then when I got to the swans, my beautiful child said, I don't even like swans. Why'd you pick swans for me? So I said, not a problem. I like swans. And so in the middle where I think her says Clara Hansen, I switched it out and I put our name and the year we were married, because y'all know that I love to hang things up to remind my husband of the happiest, luckiest, most wonderful day of his life. And so, my stitchy chair, actually, if I turn to the, what is this, my right? <laughs> this is on the wall beside me. And as I was stitching, this Liz Matthews, even though they're not the same blues, I was like, oh. y'all do it with me. Oh. Look at that. So, y'all know I, um, I have a lot of blue and white Delph. Um, porcelain that I collect and my front entry table has some of the delt and I thought okay I'm gonna change my decor up a little bit in my front and so I'm going to have this framed to match and then I'm going to put both of these sitting on easels on my entrance table together because y'all y'all look at that look at that meant to be meant to be I know I'm a genius. You know what? I surprise myself sometimes. I really do. All right, y'all. Now, for real, I'll be back in just a second. Y'all want to know why it takes me so long to film one of these things? I spent 30 minutes this morning looking for my phone, which I do several times a day. So, that put me 30 minutes behind. And now, I just spent another five minutes looking for a quilt pattern that I'd been talking to Carrie Tiger Lily about this morning. Y'all, <sighs> my poor family, my poor me. I spend more time looking for my phone every day. So, first of all, I want to thank everyone for the sweetest birthday messages ever. Y'all make a girl feel so special, and it is so appreciated. Um, thank you to my friend, Tammy, Tammy Totten. She loves when I sing to her. She sent me the sweetest birthday card. Kara Thompson sent me birthday cards. I just, I was just so loved. And then my sister, Annie, who apparently knows that I need to get more organized, sent me this for my birthday. 
Yes. 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 Y'all know. Y'all have watched me and Jess <laughs> for a few years now. And we try um, every planner and organizer there is. And I was great for the first six months with the um, planner whose name I can't remember. And it's in my stitchy basket. And I would write down every night when I stitched. And I made it till about June. And I don't feel bad because Brenda... Uh, and I are in the same boat. Laura's like the only person I know who still keeps up with it. Kudos. Um, but then I have my daily planner. I have my floss tube planner. My planners have planners, people. But now I'm going to be able to do everything, everything in one. This thing is beautiful. It has, I'm not Vanna White, y'all. It has the month. It has the marker. It has the weekly. It has <coughs> priorities and to-do lists. <coughs> it has my whips list, my conversions, my projects, my retreats, my... I'm about to have a coffee fit. I'm so excited. Y'all just give me one moment. Oh, I got so tickled and excited. For On the retreats, page. It's got the projects that you bring, a checklist of things to bring. They know me. They know me. They know what I needed. And Annie knew me. Knows me. She should. She has to talk me off a ledge all the time. But if you would like one, you can go to www.forthestitchersoul.com and I will I do know how to do notes. I don't know how to do a lot else in editing, but I can do that. I will put them in my notes below because y'all know y'all all want one. And it even has stickers. And y'all, I love me some stickers. The Crafty Grimalkin, which is an LNS in Maine, um, also has great sticker packs for your cross-stitch journaling. I just wanted to shout that out to them. I have not done a lot of cross-stitch shopping lately because I have gone down the quilting rabbit hole. And by gone down the quilting rabbit hole, I mean I bought quilting supplies. I haven't quilted a darn thing. Um, I know, y'all are shocked. But um, I went to another quilt store last week because my friend... Susie, did I mention Susie? She's also an enabler, told me about it. We've got two quilt stores close to us. Um, and if I thought the first one was good, I spent two hours in the quilt store. I almost forgot to pick up my son from school mm -hmm, last Friday because I was having such a great time at the quilt shop. Um, so I have been buying more fabric. I did order from my dear sweet friend, Shelly, the antique needlework, like all y'all did. The Law of Kindness, because y'all know this speaks to my soul. And you better believe I will be stitching this and putting it up on my wall. She opens her mouth with, with wisdom, and on her tongue is the Law of Kindness. On our tongues should always be the Law of Kindness. Listen. If you can't be anything else in life, be kind. Mm -hmm. I tell my kids all that, that all the time. I mean, I can't be skinny, but I can be nice. And then, be ye kind. I have a little kind of pin keep bowl going, and I am definitely doing this one. Shelly, you are so talented, and I am so excited for you, and I just know that you, you've you already brought so much to this community, and I just, I'm here for you and everything that you bring. I love you, sweet friend. Keep on keeping on, because we need more of this. And then, as I mentioned, I called Carrie, my dear sweet friend, Tiger Lily, this morning, because I was going to, you know, I had all intentions of doing the swoon with all of my friends. And then I looked at the pattern and I was like, what was I thinking? I can't, I can't sew a straight line. Um, but with Susie's help and with Carrie's help, 
and um, I saw this quilt. Someone had brought it in and was picking it up. It had taken it in to be quilted in Christmas fabric last week at the shop, and it's done with jelly rolls. And they told me that it was a free pattern uh, from Moda, and it is, so I feel comfortable showing you the cover page. <clears throat> and some of you may have done it. Um, it's called Contessa, and it's done with jelly roll strips. And so, you know, me and math, I started reading it and it has like things like in parentheses, 28, two and a quarter by WOF strips. And my brain stopped. And so, Carrie walked me through it. I posted last night. I actually opened one of the jelly roll packs that I have purchased. I opened it, big first step. I starched and ironed them because Kimberly Jolly and my friend Susie says you need to do that with jelly rolls. I do know now, thanks to just Gummo Stitches, that you can't do this with layer cakes, and I'm probably confusing all of y'all, but this is how my brain is going right now. Like, the hamster's about to pass out and fly off the wheel. My brain's going so fast. I have learned something. Ironing and getting fabric ready for quilting is like kidding up cross stitch. <laughs> Don't like it but it's a necessity. So then um, this week, I've also gone down the rabbit hole of free quilt patterns. And so I also uh, printed off Tiddlywinks by Moda because I have done hand paper piecing, English paper piecing, and I love the hexagons. This is done on the machine, um, but I'm pretty sure this, yes. I looked up things for jelly rolls. So today, when I finish my floss tube, I am going to start, I'm a liar. Have y'all seen this craft room? I'm gonna attempt to start to sew the strips of jelly roll together because Carrie told me I can just, you have to get seven groups of five strips. And I can just sew those five strips, one group, another five strips, and a second group. And then you cut them instead of cutting them and sewing them. I can do that. I can sew that. And what do you cut them into? Six and a half inch long rectangles. I can do that. A tune back next week. And then... I was watching my dear sweet friends, the Bougie Stitchers, Nancy and Jen. Happy birthday, Jen. Almost happy birthday, Nancy. Um, and they were showing, Jen had bought some floss tags from the Cottage Cat. And I love them. And I paused the video called Jen, because I know I could have backed up the video, but why not call my friend and said, hey, where'd you buy? And she told me, and I went. And then I called Jen back and said, I'm blocking you on floss tube. I bought these. Kind of Victorian vintagey birds. Kim, I thought of you. And then I bought these for fall. I know there's a glare with the plastic, and I'm sorry. But I didn't stop there. No. They had these Victorian women. She did. And y'all, it's not a little bit of floss drops. It's a big old bundle that you get with each one. And then, I like anything kind of Victorian vintage-y. So I had to get these flowers and insects. Maybe it could help if I... Held it the right way. And so, what I love is she does the two holes. Brilliant. And then y'all know I needed some Americana, patriotic. God bless America. Land that I love. As we all stand behind her this week. And then, y'all know that I have chicken envy. Because I can't have chickens in my HOA. Teresa, look at these. 
So yeah, I went on in about one, two, three, four, five, six sets. Don't regret it at all. Highly recommend. We'll tag her in the bottom. She sent me a sweet, sweet card. And this needle book that she's going to start doing. I will definitely be buying more of the of these and surprise, not surprise, guess what? A bunch of y'all, not these, these are mine. I'm hoarding these. I'm coveting these. Yes, I am. But some of y'all might be getting some of these for Christmas because everybody needs a pack of these floss drops in their life or six apparently. And there was a lot more I could have bought, y'all. I restrained myself. I did. I restrained myself. So, we won't show you the fabric that I bought at the quilt store, though. I'm not gonna, because I don't have to. Shush. All right. Let's talk some shop talk, shall we? And if y'all don't want to hear about my shop talk, I understand. I won't hold it against you or hunt you down or anything like that. Um, but I do want, and I even wrote notes this time. So the November box again with Chrissy, finally a farm girl. We have a few boxes left for a one-time purchase because the Fanciful Flamingos Favorite Things subscription box for 2024, the bi-monthly box, goes away after November. Mm -hmm. The bi-monthly box goes away. So the Matilda Trims a Tree um, with Chrissy Finally a Farm Girl, which is the November one, is the last one in that subscription box. Um, if you have a subscription, you do not need to cancel it. We will be doing that on our end. So you should have been charged at the beginning of October. Some of you may be charged at the beginning of November. Depends on when you subscribe. But that will be the last charge on the bi-monthly box. I am going to a quarterly box for 2025, and the fanciful flamingo is going to travel around the world. Her first stop will be Spain, and then she's going to flap her wings and go almost all the way around the world again and land in Washington with uh, Becca Sambry Stitches. And then she's going to rest up there for a little bit, and then she's going to fly back across the pond to England. Uh, to visit with Cosford Rise. And then she will end her year in Canada with the Tiny Modernist. So next year, we will, again, we will have four boxes. They will be quarterly boxes, and we will be traveling around the world. Now, I can tell you that the pattern, the designer, is not designing for their country has nothing to do with, the pattern won't have anything to do with the country. It's just the designer. And something neat and something different. Um, you're still going to get a pattern. You're still going to get the floss. You're still going to get the trim from Lady Dot Creates. You're still going to get finishing fabric from Riley Blake. Um, still going to get some of my favorite things. The boxes will grow a little bit. I am capping them next year at 250 boxes because I am flying solo this year. My daughter has joined her father's um, office in the accounting department because that is her degree and that's what she should do. So 250 is probably the max that I can handle. But again, those subscriptions will be coming out quarterly. You do have to subscribe to the box and even if you had a subscription this year, that subscription ends. You will have to resubscribe and those will open up um, at the end of November, beginning of December. I have to, we've had some issues this year with Abstel who handles our subscriptions. Um, and so I need to see when we can stop and start the subscriptions so that they charge accordingly. Please, please note, um, that when you sign up, you are signing up for a subscription, not a one-time purchase. Although you can stop it or pause it at any time, it is a subscription, which means every three months you will be charged. We have, or I have now, nothing to do with the app. Or if your credit card expires, you cannot email me and let me know. You have to go in 
and manage your subscriptions, just like you do with any magazine, Amazon, any streaming device, um, anything like that, that, uh, that you manage your subscription. I cannot manage the subscription for you. I cannot access your personal information. I cannot cancel it for you. I cannot update your credit card information for you. So please, 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 and I say this, when you sign up, make sure that you enter an email that you are going to get the notifications on. Make sure that when you sign up and um, type in your password that you write it down because you will need both of those to access your account. I don't have that information. I cannot access that information, nor do I want the responsibility of having that information. And y'all shouldn't want, y'all should be secure in the knowledge that I can't in any way, shape or form, get in on the back end and see any of your private information. So please keep that in mind when you are subscribing for next year. And remember that every three months, you will be charged 30 days in advance for the next box. Um, the signature sampler, the blessing sampler for January, the designer is Annie, the proper stitcher. I have seen the design. Of course it is stunning. Uh, Victoria Clayton silks is already dying the silks for it. We are using atomic ranch, uh, rogue fabric, mellow stone. There will be 60 boxes, um, available for linen and 40 boxes available for for Ada. Um, we are doing 100 boxes on this run. If we see that there is more of a demand, we may open it back up, but I learned with the um, September sampler that all of these pieces are especially curated for these boxes. These artisans need lead time. They also have other people that they are working with and dying for. So um, I'm trying to keep the amount manageable for everyone so that these boxes absolutely, positively, all included, will ship out December 15th so that you are ready to stitch on your blessing sampler January 1st. And I will tell you that this, with all of the events that have happened over the past week, we will be honoring um, some people with this sampler in mind. So um, keep a lookout for October 15th on my shop. Uh, the link is in my Instagram bio. It'll be on the bottom here so that you can purchase that signature sampler. Um, Stitch Florida is sold out. We do have a wait list. And to get on that wait list, you ha do have to go to my Shopify shop um, just to make it fair this year and to make sure Last year, it was just too much to look at Instagram messages, Facebook messages, text messages, messages in my posts, messages in my page. I, I That's just too much. So if you want to be on the wait list, you have to go to the Shopify shop and um, sign up that way. But if you have registered for Stitch Florida, please make sure that you ask to join the Stitch Florida 2025 Facebook group. Stitch Florida 2025 Facebook group, and I'll have, again, the link at the bottom, because the hotel information, the block is now open, uh, and that hotel information is featured in a file in that group. So you want to make sure that you get your discounted hotel rooms, and we're about 50% booked at the hotel already, um, and that's only been open for a week. So you definitely want to make sure that you reserve your room. You have time to cancel. I think cancellation with no penalties is through August 27th. So there's plenty of time for that. Um, lots of you have been asking for information on the retreat. It will be next September 18th through 20th in Altamonte Springs, Florida, which is just kind of like a suburb of Orlando at the Embassy Suites. We do not have a designer, but we do have tons of fun. It runs Thursday through Saturday. Lunches are included every day. Um, and we just have a great time. We really do. This year just filled my cup and uh, I'm still running on the energy from that retreat. The retreat is $300. Half of that is refundable if you should need to cancel for any reason through June 20th. 
Um, and after that, there are no refunds because at that point, everything has been purchased and paid for and it's impossible for us at that point in short notice to try to fill spots. So, um, that's a lot of shop talk this week and I don't like ending with shop talk. I really don't, but this is a good, it's about one of the few ways that I know that I can reach the majority of the people. Um, I have a few giveaway, not that word, not that word, not that word. Um, what do you say? Presents? I don't know. Look, if you want to be cringy and spam me because of this, well, y'all knock yourselves out. But, um, if you would like a copy of any of the proper stitchers, Hallow's Manor, just write Halloween in your comment and I will pick from that. And then my other one will be, if you would like to stitch baskets and butterflies, you'll get the pattern. And I had bought two skeins of this. I don't know why, because again, it's, there's so much in it. I didn't even use half a skein for this, but you will get the pattern and the skein of thread works that I used. Uh, and just write butterflies somewhere in your comments. And I thank y'all so much for tuning in again this week. I'm hoping to get back to a regular schedule. I had planned to do weekly. Last weekend, we had a pesky hurricane get in our way. Uh, but I sure do enjoy our fellowship time together. And y'all have a blessed and wonderful weekend. And until we meet again, don't forget to choose joy in each and every day. And spread a little joy too. Bye, y'all.